Hallelujah. We're going to go from about maybe verse number 21. Just hold it there. 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 21. If you've been here the last couple of weeks, right after Easter, we started talking about power and authority. Amen? Amen. And so the first week we covered the fact that all authority and power is given to God. It's his. You can't take it. You can't do nothing about it. You just got to accept it. That's what it is. Amen? Amen. Come on. The centurion said, I'm a man under authority. I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to the other, come, and he comes. But you... You've got a different authority. All you got to do is speak a word, and whatever you speak to has to obey you. Amen? God can speak to anything, and it has to obey God. That is reason to rejoice. Amen. So all power and authority belongs to him. And then last week we learned that this man who holds all power and authority demonstrates what true power and authority looks like practically on earth. Because he got up in the middle of his, uh, the night before he was going to die, in the middle of his last supper, and he washed the disciples' feet. And we learned a valuable lesson last night that being royalty in this world is to be served. But being royal in God's kingdom is to serve others. It's not a royalty a lot of people desire. It's an ugly one, but that's why he washed feet. And we know that the feet symbolizes the gospel. How beautiful are the feet. How beautiful on the mountain are those whose feet bring the good news. And the Bible talks about uh, 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 how can they hear unless a preacher be sent. And preachers, and when it talks about the whole armor of God and it gets to the feet, it talks about having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And Jesus washed those feet because he knows those feet would suffer a lot. They would go through this world and be uh, tainted by a lot of things but how beautiful are those who bring the good news and he served and he said to them you know Peter you learn got up and he said I'll wash your feet and it's easy to wash Jesus feet amen. amen but he never asked us to wash his feet he asked us to do the tough part he said wash the person next to you feet come on tell your neighbor your foot ain't worthy of my hands come on say I haven't seen your feet hallelujah you need a professional pedicure. You need, you need more than anointing oil for that. Hallelujah. You need shilling oil. <laughs> you need all kind of oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Bet you the Caribbean got some oil for that. Coconut oil. Amen. Some type of shake butter ain't doing nothing for that. Amen. But it becomes tough when it's time to serve others. But that's what we're called to do. The word minister in our modern day Terminology is like prestigious and all of that, but translated rightly it means servant. Amen. And ain't nobody want to come into the stage, servant. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Come on, man. Tell a couple more. We ain't servant. just going to introduce the servant, right? We got the servant in the house. Yeah, man. You know, it's not a title to be desired, so we remixed it to minister, man of God. Amen. And all this type of stuff, you know, those titles that I'm cool with serving, man of God, that's kind of big. Like, you're the man of God? You are the man? And then, and then if, you, if you deep code, you gets manned. You gotta put the D at the end, the man of God. So whenever they graduate you and they call you the man of God, you got a little bit more anointing, right? Amen. If you're just a man of God, you up and come. He didn't <laughs> I'll just bless the man of God, give him more water. But that's the man of God coming. <laughs> His robe. Amen. So we learned that, but we're called to serve, man. And the world needs people to serve them. Right. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So no matter where you go, no matter how prestigious you get, always remember that Jesus, in the middle of all that he's doing, took off his clothes, walked over, took the slave's apron, poured the water in the slave's basin, and bowed down and did the servant's job. Amen. Amen. But today we're going to talk about what power and authority looks like uh, in, in a different sense. And I guess I struggle with what the title is, but I guess if I were to talk today, we're going to talk about what rebellion looks like. All right. All right. Come on, talk to me in here. Amen. You know that word rebel, people try to use it positively. And we always try to take negative words and give them good meaning, you know what I mean? Like nowadays, it's actually better to be bad than good. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You're a good player, but he's bad. Yeah, yeah. Some, for some reason, bad means better. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Not good meaning good, but good. Well, no, what is it? Not bad meaning good, but bad. What, 
forgot the problem. I'm so old. Amen. Y'all don't listen to secular music. That's why y'all going to hell. I don't. Amen. God didn't want me to hear that out of my spirit. Hallelujah. But you know, you walk around there, that's a bad boy. You don't mean he's bad like he needs to be locked up. You mean he's good at what he does, right? And that word rebel, you know, nowadays, like, yeah, rebel. See the movie, like, rebel. But the actual, you know, meaning of that is to is to is to go against authority, and it should be authority that is right. Now, if somebody's going against wrong authority, that's actually freedom fighting. So today, you'll see people say you you'll see that they, they, they no longer label or they try to remix and say that slaves didn't rebel, but they were freedom fighters. Because the truth is, they weren't rebels. They were being abused and standing up for your freedom. There's a difference between standing up for your rights and rebelling. Y'all with me today? Yes. Rebellion is when there's authority. The authority is all right, but you just don't like it. No king. I got a bishop in the house. I got a preacher in the house. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about today? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And, um, and, and, and I'm going to read my scripture, and then, 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 then we're going to talk. Amen. So let's read our scripture. Put my scriptures up there. Amen. So I'm going to read the end of a story, and my wife said, I want to hear your message today. Because, you know, we love, I, like, I love this part of the Bible. I kept saying whenever I was studying this message, I walked into the room. I said, if, if I only get the budget, this is the movie I would shoot right here. But I say that about everything. Anyway. <laughs> you know, but, um, but I, I, you know, she said, what are you going to preach? I said, I should just read this man's whole story. So much, such a blessing. But I'm just going to read the ending, and then I'm going to try to give you the, the context of it. And then, you know, leave you all alone. Amen. Uh, and nobody really cares about Cleveland anyway, so we're not in a rush to go home. Sorry you wore that shirt. <laughs> then Joab said to the Cushite, Joab said to the Cushite, tell the king what you have seen. And the Cushite bowed down before Joab and began to run off. He's got a long trip, so he begins to run. Ahimaaz, son of uh, Zadok, again said to Joab, Come what may please let me run behind the Cushite. So y'all got what's going on here, right? One man bowed before the king, bowed before Joab, and said, You got it. He's off running. He's running to meet David. And here comes Zadok's son, who said, Can I run too behind the Cushite? But Joab replied, My son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. I know you're going to tell, you think that you're bringing good news to the king, but I know this king. And what you're about to tell him, even though it's good, it's not good to him. Right? He said, come what may, I want to run. So Joab said, you know what? Run. <coughs> then Ahimaaz <coughs> ran by way of the plane, and guess what he did? He took a different direction. So the Cushite is running, he took another direction, and he begins to outrun the Cushite. Go on. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates, the watchman went out up to the roof of the gateway by the wall, and as he looked out, he saw a man running alone. The watchman is concerned because he wants to see who's this coming. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And go on. The watchman called out to the king and reported it. The king said, if he's alone, then he must have good news. And the man came closer, closer, go on. And then the watchman saw another man running. He called out to the gatekeeper, look, another man is running alone. King said he must be bringing good news too. <laughs> like when people come alone, <laughs> right? And uh, the watchman said, it seems to me that the first one runs like Ahimaaz, son of Zadok. He's a good man, the king said. He must be coming with good news. You know, you know which people bring good news. Amen. And you know who, you, you come on, some of y'all know which Amen. phone when the number rings. You know whether to click that green button or that red. Come on, don't lie. You're in church. Come on. Amen. Come on, somebody. You got the number in there, but every time it rains, you got you got it automatically set to that person voicemail. 
Amen. Then Ahimaaz called out to the king, all is well. He bowed down before the king with his face to the ground and said, praise be to the Lord your God. He has delivered up the men who lifted their hands against the Lord, my king. So you think David's going to say, yeah. Everybody who's ever come against me is now dead. But look at what David, David asked. And I can just picture this scene in my mind, y'all. The man runs. He's out of breath. He says, King, those that seek to kill you are dead. David gets up from his seat and he says, Is the young man, Absalom, safe? Him as answered, I saw great confusion just as Joab was about to send the king's servant. And me. You're not really telling the whole truth. <laughs> Your servant, but I don't know what it was. King said, stand aside and wait here. So he stepped aside and stood there. Then the Cushite arrived and said, My lord, the king, hear the good news. The Lord has delivered you today from all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, may the enemies of my Lord, the king, and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. Go on. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. Because when the man said, may all your enemies be like that young man, that was his way of saying, he's dead as ever. And may every enemy you have be dead. But the king instead walked up to the gateway and wept as he said, oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died Instead of you, O oh Absalom, my son, my son. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. It is already blessed. And I pray that you speak, Father, and we would see things in ourselves that needs to be reshaped and transformed by your mighty hand. Do just that in this house. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I was thinking about the world. And the fact that God is the authority over mankind. Come on, tell your neighbor, God is your authority. And the world is governed by principles. And you want to become a principled person in life. A person who lives without principles and laws and rules are some of, well, I'm just going to say flat out, they're the most terrible people in the world. You say, why is that? You have to be a principled person because the world is governed by principles or laws. Yeah. Naturally, you see it. And they have to be obedient in order for the world, the natural world, to work. Amen. We need the sun to be hot. Yeah. You all understand what I'm saying? We need the sun to shine. Amen. We need the sun to rise because if the sun don't do what it, its job is, and obey the principles when the creator created it and put it there to do, then the grass wouldn't be green. Amen. And if the grass dies, there's no cows. Mm -hmm. And if there's no cows, there's no steak. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> it's bigger than that. We need, we need the sunlight to hit the grass because... The plants gives us, as my son would always teach me, every day you get oxygen from the plants. That's right. That's right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. And there are principles in the world that is governing in this world every day that you're not even aware of that you, if they, if this world ever disobeys, we need the earth to stay where it is. Yes. Because if it move a little bit further, we freeze. If it move a little bit closer, we all burn up. We need, it to, we need it to rotate. We need it to revolve. We need it to do that because I need my Christmas gifts. Amen. You know, we put meanings to all these things, but it's, it's much bigger than what we put meanings to. That's right. Amen. 
But you need the world to, to obey the principles. That's why I said in one of my songs, I said that the, uh, 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 science is the study of what happened when he spoke in Genesis. Amen. Mankind has been trying to figure out when God spoke in Genesis for them six days that he made creation, what really happened? Yes, yes, yes. We know the, the answer is this, that all creation obeys him. Amen. That word of God is so powerful that since even to now, the word he spoke, the sun still comes up every morning and obeys the Almighty. Oh, come on. Y'all hearing me in this place? Yeah, yeah, the trees still grow. The, the, waters, the, 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 the waters only come but so far. There's more water on the earth, but yet we're not drowning today. Amen. Everything is in obedience to God. Nature is in obedience to God. Even the animals are in obedience to God. The cows don't smoke the grass. They eat it. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, don't, do you know, be a cow today, man. Don't tell your neighbor. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. The, the, even, they, even the animals, the only people, I mean the only thing, that have a problem in following the principles is your neighbor. That's right. Not you. Amen. Come on, talk to me in here. Amen. And it seems like, like that started since... Since before Adam and Eve, you, you know, the devil set that off. He set that rebellion off. Amen. He looked at God and started feeling himself a little bit. You got to be careful when you start to feel yourself. Amen. You get a little jobby job now, you know what I mean? Amen. Got a little new weave going on there, girl. I see you. <laughs> feeling yourself. Couldn't do this before. <laughs> Don't do it too hard. It might fly off. Don't do it too hard. Next year on YouTube, we laughing you. <laughs> <laughs> Say break it down in New York and do something different. Man. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That devil said, I want to be like God. Yes, he God said it wasn't good enough for you that you walked in the mountains with me. You walked on every precious stone in the mountains of God. He said, I clothed you. You had your the bones in you was music. You sent up the worship in heaven. You were the man. Say that. Say that. But I want you to know we preach that the devil is the controller of music. He never was. He was given a gift from God. God is the controller of all music. Amen. Not the devil. Amen. But he has wisdom on how to use it. That's why when you're in the club, you, you just... I don't even know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't even know why I'm getting my fifth drink. <laughs> Gotta have music, right? It ain't right if the music ain't on. Come on, talk to me in here. Sorry, I'm like, no, I don't want to even know I go to the club. No. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking You got to have some music. Music bring a light. And there's certain music that make you feel certain way. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know how I do gospel music? Because I took a page out of David's book. David, David, at the end of all of this here, the story we're going to get into, he, he gave this long song on the God. He said, at the end of it, he ended, he said, that's why I sing on to you, because nobody's like all of the things I just listed. So why sing about anything else? Because yeah. nothing else in this world really going to bring healing. Why put all those nice melody to poison? Yeah. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I'm a Christian artist. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And so, 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 he said, you had all of this. And all you have to do is obey me, but, but it's just something about rebellion. I just can't be satisfied where I'm at. i got to be where you are. Yeah. Like, like, I just can't play the part and see you creating this thing here and just be part of it. Man, look at all this earth you created. Look at, look, look, look. Look at the lion. Look how he lifting up Simba. It's beautiful. That's the circle of life. And it moves us all. <laughs> look at it. Look at what you, instead of him just playing his part and chilling, he want to overthrow the man. Amen. Amen. But God wasn't having it. You see, when people rebel in, in churches and in jobs and all that, they go through meetings and they got to have press conferences to yeah. determine why they fired this player or this coach. The Bible says, Jesus said, I was there when Satan fell like lightning. Like lightning. Yeah. Soon as rebellion was found in him, God said, Bow! <laughs> I don't tolerate rebellion. Amen. 
But it just seems like mankind have a hard time because it entered the garden. Yes. And Eve, just you chilling, you running, you frolicking in Eden. <laughs> it's a nice word. I don't, you know, have you ever frolic? <laughs> this summer, I want you to plan a frolic. <laughs> Right? What are you doing? Call up Steve. See what you doing. Me and uh, Denzel, we're going to go frolic. <laughs> don't frolic. Don't frolic. Don't frolic. It sounds like someone needs deliverance. But they're in the garden, and, and, and all of a sudden, Eve, it's not good enough to enjoy everything. You could be like God. The Bible says in the book of Peter, three people to watch out for. Cain, Balaam, mm. and Korah. Y'all like, I only know Cain. <laughs> <laughs> Who Balaam and Korah? Ain't Korah the lady from uh, Medea? <laughs> Korah? <laughs> Korah, come here. <laughs> like, God said to beware of Korah? But who was Cain? Cain was somebody who was jealous of his brother. That's right. That's right. Who didn't want to do what God asked him to do. Amen. Who was Balaam? Balaam was a, a prophet of God who couldn't, who was in error and who was trying to use his giftings and talents for his own benefits. That's right. So guys, you gotta watch jealous people. You got people, you got people who, who will want to use my glory for their own reward, but they're not really with me. And then last he said, Korah, well, who's Korah? Korah was the one who rebelled against Moses. Yes, who said, do God only use you alone? You think you're the only one that can run this company? That's right. Tell him. Sound familiar? Tell him. She thinks she's the only one who can be manager on this floor. She only got this job. <laughs> that, was, that was Korah. And Moses was always quiet. Yes, he was. Because Moses knew something I'm going to show you all in a minute. But it just seems like we have a problem with being principled people. But principled people, they work like this. If you're an honest person, and that's a principle you hold fast to, then dishonesty makes you uncomfortable. Amen. Right. You speak up against it no matter the cost. Because you're a, even if you lose your job, even if you lose your house, the principles that you live by are bigger than what you uh, 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 achieve and attain. Amen. There's not a lot of that. A lot of people running this world that are not principled people. They look at what they can gain, and what they gain justifies their status in life. So many, oh, y'all, okay, y'all hearing me in here? Principled people are people who said it is a, it is right for me to not commit adultery and be faithful, no matter how hard this marriage gets. It will never come in my, to my thoughts to leave this woman because this uh, this is a principle I live by. Amen. And principled people end up blessed. I wish I knew this as a young person. I wish I knew this as a younger person. I wish I knew how serious God was about being people of your word. I wish I knew that. Because I, I grew up in church. I took God for granted. I used to have principles in this area, but none in this area. And I used to think God don't bless me because of this area. But I'm going to tell you this. God don't bless junk. If all of it is messed up, you're going to pay the price. You're going to feel for it. You're going to have to learn that God is a God who doesn't honor your word. He honors his. Because he's a principal God. So, if you, you, you know, we live in a generation that teaches us it's all about you. The universe revolves around you, not the sun. And so we say things like this today. Watch this, watch this. We walk around and say, it's my body. I do whatever I want with it. <laughs> I put whatever I want. Some of you like, but it is. I wear whatever I want. I dress it however I want. I can mark it up however I want. Now, this is not, a, you know, whether tattoo and all that's wrong, amen. But this is what we say. This is the generation. I wear my hair however I want. It's my body. It's my choice to do whatever I want. Nobody's to tell me what to do. Nobody tell me who to go to bed with. Nobody tell me if I should stay married or not. It is my body. Don't tell me what to listen to. Don't tell me what to do. Who are you to judge me? You would rather me judge you. Amen. Amen. Than the judge of the earth. Y'all follow what I'm saying in this place? They will write, my body, I can do whatever I want. And don't ever tell me because I own this. So the concept there is, the owner of the thing determines what the thing should do. 
<laughs> you don't really believe that. That's true. No, you don't. That's true. Because you didn't make the earth. You didn't make nature. You didn't make you. You are owned by a higher power. And isn't it his right to do whatever he wants with what he owns? No, it's up to, when it comes to God, why does God do this? Why does God allow this? Why does God, why does God allow pain? Why is suffering? Why is this? Why, why what? If you can do whatever you want with yourself, why can't he do whatever he wants with his creation? You really don't believe that. You believe that is for you, but not for God. See, that's why I've learned I lost my father. and I, I've seen death in my house, became numb. Still don't cry at a lot of things today. Because <coughs> I've become numb. But I had to learn that he said, I give and I take. That's not your truth. Those are the harder things in Christianity to deal with. But, but if you can do whatever you want with your life, why can't God do whatever he want with his? We got a problem with that. Which brings me to my story here about rebellion and all these principles, right? It brings me to this man by the name of Absalom in the Bible. Somebody say Absalom. Absalom. I'm going to tell you all a story real quick. Absalom was the third son of David. He was born. His mother, uh, uh, the, the marriage was really a, a relationship between, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a peace type of marriage. David married a woman in order to, to cause a peace treaty between a foreign country. And out of that came Absalom. The word Absalom or Absalom, it means that he's he's the he's the, 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 the father of peace, or my father is peace. Mm. But his name represented everything else except that. Alright. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Amen. So Absalom was there, he's got an older brother. His older brother's name is Amnon. Somebody say Amnon. Amnon. Amnon was heir to the throne, the firstborn. <laughs> David knew this, right? So he's training up Amnon, he's training up his sons. But I want you to notice something before I tell you the first story so you can understand the context. The Bible says in the chapter before uh, 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 we get to the story of Amnon, two chapters, one starts off with, and David looked at Bathsheba. <laughs> and then it ends with, he killed U Uriah, and Nathan tells him, thou art the man. Amen. So the two chapters before we get to this chapter, David is taking somebody's wife. Come on, y'all don't get quiet on me. Don't fall asleep. Make sure that heat is on. Wake him up. Call him up in this place. I mean, the cold. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. He takes a man's wife, forces her to be with him, and then kill a man because the woman got pregnant. Hey. That, ain't, that ain't God, y'all. That, that ain't how you get a wife. <laughs> when God says he that finds a wife, he don't mean somebody else's wife. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And so, 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 and then the Bible, after Nathan tells him this, Bang, the next chapter. And Amnon. Who's Amnon? Amnon is somebody who was so in love with his sister Tamar. Twisted. Twisted. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Same father, different mothers, but she was beautiful. The Bible says that Tamar was gorgeous. She was beautiful. And Amnon, the Bible said that he was so, or he thought he was so in love with her. And he just, you know, every way he went, I got to get this girl. I got to have this girl. And he hung around with a, with a brother by the name of uh, jo uh, jo Jonadab. And, and he pulled him to the side. I said, man, you want this girl? I I'll give you a plan. Here's what we're going to do. Go to your father and say, you know, that you, you know you're, not, you, you, you're not really right and whatever, but get her in the room. Convince him to allow her to come into the room. And when you're alone, have her make you some, some of her food because you know she got good cooking. And when she comes over... And you got to do what you got to do. When I used to read this as a kid, I'm like, this dude is twisted, but I didn't realize really what's going on here. He's eliminating any witnesses from the story. He says, you got to get her alone if you're going to do this. He's literally telling his friend how to rape this girl. Yeah. Yes, he is. You got to be careful who you hang with, man. Yes. You got to be careful who you allow to tell you. You, you. He needed a friend who said, boy, you're tripping. You lusting after that girl. Go home and chill. <laughs> That's right. He needed a friend. Like, see, some of y'all don't got friends like that. That's why you're in trouble. You got friends who will tell you how to get into your mess. Right. Yes. But he told them how to plot this thing out, eliminate all the witnesses, get her alone. She's alone. And he says, come over here, bring that soup. And the Bible says he grabbed her. And the woman is there. And the woman says, my brother, my brother, don't do this to me. Listen, if you go to the king, he will make me your wife. At least marry me before you do this. I didn't want to preach that this morning, but look at what she's saying. Before you even disrespect me, 
try to marry me first. Today we got a bunch of Amnons living in this world that ain't got the courage to marry a woman first. They say stupid stuff like I gotta taste the menu before before I know y'all hearing what I'm saying. Disrespecting women and sleeping with them, but when it comes time to marry them, you don't want to marry them. Got my marriage messed stuff up. Your twisted self. Y'all quiet today on me. A lot of Amnons in this world, man. Shacking up. If you love her so much, why you ain't marrying her? That's right. Marriage messed things up. You twisted. Amen. I mean, how, how, how making a verbal commitment publicly mess things up? Amen. If it mess up, if the verbal commitment messes it up, then you a liar. Right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This so, 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 so he grabbed the girl. She said. And he did what he had to do. He raped her. The Bible said and immediately, immediately, this is what lust does. This is why men sleep with women and say whatever they got to say at the bar. They'll tell you all types of things. They'll tell you, hey, chocolate, whatever, whatever, drop or whatever. You call you all kinds of stuff, amen, you know. Uh, what, what, what they say, what they say. They call you all kind of candy. <laughs> not everything you gotta yell out. Not everything you gotta yell out. Every, you know, they say all types of stuff. And once they get you, watch how that man changed. Because lust is a crazy thing. Yep. Lust is self seeking. Yep. Once it's satisfied, that's why so many men sleep with women in the club, sleep with women all over. And the next day, they don't want them no more. And these women are heartbroken. They're done. They don't know what to do. That's right. That's why, ladies, I'm telling you, don't you sleep with no man unless he marries you and he's willing to commit to you. I call it, he's a principal man. And say amen and say ouch. What do you say, Pastor Mike? Morgan, leave him. <laughs> what do you mean leave him? We've we invested four years, and he ain't married you yet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, he's waiting. Boy, until he get a job. He ain't got a job in Fort. The economy's bad. It ain't that bad. <laughs> Ooh, Pastor Ross, today I don't care. Y'all hear me in this place? He raped this girl. And the Bible says he's gone. The girl is there. Never been touched before. She runs to Absalom. Absalom said, what happened, sister? She tells him, he said, Amnon did this. And I studied this story. I tried to get the revelation out of this because I'm like, is Absalom wrong for what he did? Because his next move seemed like Exactly what I would do. Amen. Amen. He said, well, what's the next move? But then there's a scripture in there that shows me something about him. His next move was he waited two years later and he killed Amnon. Two years later. Two years Amen. later, he let that thing fest in his heart. But the one thing about the scripture is the father, the Bible says that David just was furious. We often preach and said he did nothing. Some of us, we really don't know. We really don't know what David did or not. The Bible just said he was furious. Yes. If he did do something, it wasn't good enough for Absalom. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it festered in his heart for two years. But I tell you this, when somebody's in charge, you got to learn to let the person who God has put in charge deal with it. Because when you take matters into your own hands, you run into trouble. You say, well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Because here's a scripture that is locked up in the middle there that, 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 that troubled my mind. When she came to him, the Bible said that this is what he said to her. Uh, just calm down, girl. This is your brother. Don't take it to heart. Even though he knew what he was plotting and already, why would you say that to somebody who's been raped? I would have been the first one to be like, well, we got to go to David with this. And I'd have been knocking like that, what you gonna do? Amen. And if you ain't gonna do nothing, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Amen. But from the jump, he didn't care if David handled it or not. He felt that I was qualified. Even though he seemed like he's doing something that you can relate to, something that you can relate to doesn't always mean it's the right way you're doing it. And God is concerned with the way something is done. Well, what happens is, he says to his father, he said, I want to invite you to the sheep sharing session. And David like, I ain't going to no sheep sharing session. Well, you know, I'm bigger than that. I ain't say that. He said, I ain't coming to that. He said, well, let, let Amnon come. Yes, 
he did. And all the brothers and everybody in the family got that boy out there, and the Bible says he killed. This is what the Bible says. The Bible didn't say Absalom killed him. The Bible says he ordered his men to kill him. Rebellious people, number one, are unprincipled people. They never live by anything principled. They do whatever benefits them. And number two, you find rebellious people never have the courage to do it themselves. They always use people to get their dirty work done. They're always telling people, this is what you should do. This is what you and he commanded these men to kill him. Well, the boy is dead. David is furious. David sends him. David is weeping over Amnon. And Joab pops up in the picture. Joab is a rebellious man, too. Amen. He's a whole other message. Amen. Joab, the king said, he's got to be exiled. Joab said, no, we need to get him back. Devises a plan, sets a woman up to convince David to bring this boy back. The boy comes back. David said, he can be back, but he's got to live away from me. Yeah. He can't see me face to face. Well, the boy set up a plan. He said, this man got to see me face to face. But I want you to know that when he came back, the Bible says, right, when he finally saw his son, he kissed the son Absalom. The way he saw his father was he burnt Joab's field. And Joab showed up and said, what you burn my field for? He said, because you ain't, I've been emailing you, bro. And I'm responding to my email. I've been texting you. He ain't calling me. It was good. So I had to burn your field down. So he showed up and he told me, did all of that and said, I want to see my father. He brought him into his father, and this is what David did. David got up and kissed Absalom. Because at the end of the day, it was his son. You see, David got to the kingdom different from how Absalom was trying to get to the kingdom. That's right. God called him to the kingdom. Amen. He didn't fight for it, he didn't steal it from nobody. He didn't disrespect anybody to get his positions. He didn't cheat anybody to get his position. He served. And the man that he was serving wanted to kill him. But in all the time that that man wanted to kill him, David was a principal man. Yes, he and he said, I can't touch what God has put someplace. If God put it there, then God's got to move it. Amen. That's right. If God blessed your boss, you can't be mad and jealous. That's right. If God allowed that person to, to get up in life, you can't be mad and want to pull them down. The opposite with Absalom, don't look at what Absalom did. Once he kissed him and he was released back in society, the Bible says every day he would hang at the gate. Yes, he did. <laughs> and when people came in and they met with David and David judged matters, every time David sent his correction, and they were on their way out, he said, hey man, what the king told you? <laughs> you like that decision? So rebellious people do they use people. Yes, they do. You know, if I were king, I'd probably judge that a little bit different. I'd have did this. And then they would say, Wow, man, Absalom, you would do that? And the Bible says he was so fake that when they said, You're so great, and you're so and they begin to give him accolades, he would say, No! I'm just like you guys. No, 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 don't, don't put me on a pedestal. I'm just, you got to be careful of false humility. I'd rather people tell me the truth from the jump and tell me this is what I'm after than people who say, no, no, I don't want no credit. I don't want any. But soon as something go wrong, you know I did this, that, that, and this for them, and I did this for them, and I did, and when they were going through this, I did this, and they, they tell the whole resume. False humility. And he would tell everybody that, and the Bible says this, he stole the hearts of the men. Amen. He didn't get the kingdom from God. He stole. And whatever you steal, you're going to have to fight to maintain. But when God give it to you, boy, it don't matter what comes your way. It's going to be yours. Because David went through some stuff right after this. The Bible says he stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And he begun to plot. He walked into his dad. He said, Dad, let me go up to Hebron to worship because I told God if he ever brought me back, I'll go worship him. King says, go. While he's going, he says, when I get up to Hebron, here's what I want you all to do. All the men that is with me in every different part of Israel, when you hear the trumpet blast, I want you all to just shout, Absalom is king. Did that, and the Bible says he shouted, Absalom is king. And the Bible says, and the throne of Israel was shaken that day. 
he rebelled against his father. Mm -hmm. And he used people to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of know rebels. Yes, you do. They're always the ones texting everybody, <laughs> but never the boss. <laughs> You, you know rebels. They associate with everybody. They always say, yeah, I don't like how they handle that. But they never go to the boss. Amen. You say, well, but why is he wrong in this? Because there's, a, there's somebody that God placed in order. You know rebels. They're the ones that always call you and say, you know, I don't know how they got that position. I don't know how they got there. You see it in the family. It's, oh, yeah, you know I mean? it's even in family. I can be a better mother than you will ever be. Really? You don't know what I've been through to even get you here. And you got the nerve to say that to a mother or a father? Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'll, I'll, and, it, and it exists. And this man did this. And the Bible said David got up and he fled, y'all. Yes, he did. Fled. And as he's fleeing... All types of embarrassment is coming to him. People are throwing stuff at him, mocking him, laughing him. And David just said, all through all of this, if the Lord wants to take me off the throne this way, then so let it be. And they said, we're going to kill that man who's throwing stuff at you. He said, why y'all always violent? He asking people why they violent. He said, y'all put your swords, man. We ain't going to kill nobody. If God sees this fit for me, you see the humility in David? If this is how God is going to take it away from me, so let it be. But I want you to know that God never took it away from him. There's a, there's a story in the middle, and I'm coming to a close soon. The Bible says this, that Zadok took the ark, the chest where God rested, and said, David, as you're leaving, we're going to take this chest with you. And David said, no, you're not. That's God's people over there. You take that chest back to Jerusalem. And you know what that says to me? That even though King David was gone, and they had a rebellious king now in order, they weren't in charge. As long as the ark was there, and God's glory was there, there's a king that nobody could ever take off the throne. The Bible says that Absalom got... To that place. Now I want you to know what Absalom looked like. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he had, he was the most handsome dude. Yes, it did. That when he cut his hair, he cut it once a year and it weighed close to over two to three pounds. Say that. Say you say that. what kind of hair he had? It's likely that he had locks. Why it was heavy is because they powdered their hair. Possibly he put gold powder in his hair. So when this handsome young man come out with these locks done up with gold on it. He was a figure to look at, boy. And then he would tell people, if I were you, if I were, if I, if I, if I, if I. <laughs> and rebelled against <clears throat> He took all of David's advisors and he had them working for him. Mm -hmm. He took David's women and he, this is what the Bible said. He slept with them in the public so yep. that all of Israel could see. Amen. Amen. This man would stop at nothing to get what he wants. Mm -hmm. The thing is, he don't even really know what he wants. Amen. Then he comes after David to kill him. And it was Joab. Imagine this. With all that battling going on, King David says, don't kill him. a different king, a different leader because David never got into leadership to lord over people but he knew it was a call from God let me tell y'all, I'm going to talk to y'all this morning you see, you've been taught that, you know, you get up in life to show people what you've attained no, any place God puts you come on, talk to me in here if God gives you a business, it's not for you to be arrogant and flush your money y'all hearing me in here if God blesses you with a home, it's not for you to, to you know, everything goes on Instagram today. For the wrong purpose. Amen. Never to glorify God, but to show people 
whatever pain and we lord it over people and we bully people and we talk down to people and we treat people arrogantly because we're chasing something like Absalom and we would never stop at nothing. Some of us have lied to get to positions. Some of us has cheated our way into where we are and to come and testify that God's been good. He got me this. Y'all hearing me in this place? That Absalom spirit is so easy to creep into people's lives. And you use people easy. You send them, to, you pick up the phone, you call and you twist. You tell people because you're trying. You know people always tell you their side of the story first. That's an Absalom mentality. They never tell you what they've done. Whenever people, listen, can't say amen, say ouch. If you always tell them the story and you start with what they've done to you. You ain't looking for a true answer. You're looking to persuade a mind. You're looking to get somebody to see from your point of view. Listen, there's always three sides. Yes. Yours, the next, and then the truth. All right. <laughs> Persuading, he's pulling, he's twisting. And watch this. I want you to show you something about God and that God is a principal God. The Bible says that Joab saw him. Vain man. The Bible talks about David's heart from the time you met David. From the time you were introduced to David, this is what the Bible says. Man looks at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. The description given of Absalom was never about any of his character. It was about his hair. It was about how he looked. It was about what he possessed. Amen. And you know how he died? He was riding on the horse. Coming to kill David. All that glorious locks caught into a tree. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the rebellious son who could have gotten the kingdom if he just did what was right. He wants a position that could have been handed to him. But he didn't want it the way it was supposed to go. Caught up in the air dangling, but he's not dead. Nope. That's not how he died. Right. He died by his hair. No, he didn't. <laughs> he's hanging. And Joab walks up to him. Joab, the one who, the king said, don't bring my son back. Who went and brought the son back? That's right. So you got to be careful who you put in positions next to you, too. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody's getting this. This is why when it comes to life as a young kid, I wish I'd learned these lessons now. I'd have had two friends. <laughs> Amen. Because you think like everybody deserves places in your life. Don't you put just anybody in any position oh in your life. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You don't pick anybody to be a husband and a wife. You don't pick anybody to share your deep life with. You don't pick anybody in charge of anything that you don't know that loves the Lord like that. Amen. Joab was the one that convinced them, bring this rebel back. And now that all of this is happening, he turns to him and says, don't kill my son. You know what Joab did? Joab took his knife out, stabbed that boy up in his heart while he's hanging from that tree, and then tells his men that all his men unleashed their swords and started killing Absalom. And he says, send the message to the king, to the Cushite, and tell him, son's dead. The other guy said, can I go too? And they run. And the Bible says that all David asked was, is my son alive? There's a difference between the character in the two people. One really cares. One could care less about who he destroys, what happens in his life. And Absalom died that type of death. And I want you to know this, and I'm done here. The man that threw stuff at David, when David came back, he said, you know I was just bugging. <laughs> David said, I ain't going to kill you. I'm going to hook you up. David went to Mephibosheth and his, his servant Ziba, who lied and said, this man who said that Saul is going to get back the kingdom, he said, y'all divide, divide the spoils. I ain't going to kill none of y'all. He ain't kill nobody. He ain't kill nobody. He ain't kill nobody. Amen. David lived on. Watch this. God is a principal God. God don't forget. 
when you think you get away with stuff, yeah. God don't forget. You know? So every time you gossip, every time you pick up the phone, every word spoken against about people that God is putting over you, every time you step over that line, that's why America's in trouble. We don't respect nothing in this country. News media is disrespectful. Even though people are presidents from Barack Obama to George Bush to our current president, we speak anyhow about anybody. It's a disrespectful generation. This generation don't even respect elders. We talk anyhow about uh, those that went before us. We speak and we say anything because we've got this mentality that nobody can tell me nothing. It's all about making it rain in the end. The Bible said this. David forgave everybody. He didn't even told. He, it seemed like David never really found out how Absalom died. Still had Joab serving with him. Watch this. One day Israel was in trouble. He said, God, why is Israel in trouble? He said, because Saul didn't take care of some business, so that's why y'all punish him. Take it. And I began to see something about God. God didn't forget since Saul time. So he had to go and cause these men to be killed for God to begin to. And then when he's getting ready to die, Solomon is having a conversation with him. And King David says, Son, Remember Shimia. What do you do? And I was on the run. He acted like he was with me, but he threw stuff at me and he said stuff. Do what you want. He says, son, if you're going to rule, this is a man showing you how to lead now. This is all he had to deal with and lead it. That rebellion is taking him out, boy. He said, Joab, he killed two of my main guys. He never mentioned Absalom, so I don't know if he ever knew. He said, in time, do what you got to do with him. And he goes down this whole list of rebellious people that made it very difficult for King David to lead. And he said, Solomon, take them all out. And you know what Solomon did? took every one of them out and this is what the Bible says and now the kingdom of Solomon was secure Wow! why are you saying all this <clears throat> because at the end of the day there's a God who don't forget and he looks at your character Amen. and unless your character is changed he's coming after you he's coming after you so, Pastor, that's a scary message today. It absolutely is. That's why you just don't say anything about anybody. That's why you just don't treat what you've been given anyhow. You steward it and ask God how to do it right. That's why you don't steal and fight for positions. You don't fight. I would never want to be David. I don't want that assignment. It's too much. I'd kill everybody. I kill, I start, I kill everybody. The little bit God has given me, I feel like killing everybody. The little, I promise you. But God remembers and he knows. You want God to bless you? Don't be an Absalom. Amen. Pray for people that is over you. If they don't know better, don't talk behind their back. Go have a conversation with them. Yes, yes. Don't call everybody and tell them what people have done to you, but you never picked up the phone and called a person. Amen. Some of you say, well, I'm the parent. The child don't even know you feeling like that. Amen. Pick up the phone and call the child. Amen. But the child is Absalom because David is the father. No, you Absalom. <laughs> the child don't know. Amen. But you're talking to everybody about the child except the child. You're talking to everybody who's hurting you, letting that bitterness fester up. That's that, that's that. And the person has even called you and they said, I've forgiven you. They kissed you and welcomed you back into the kingdom, but you still can't let it go. You walk around talking about, if I'm king, if I'm king, you're still holding on to it. Don't get caught hanging on a tree with your golden locks. Goldy locks. Let's <laughs> bow our heads and close our eyes. You gotta learn how to forgive and let God be God. King David had opportunities to kill Saul, but 
never once with your heads bowed and your eyes closed I got a lot of Absalom in me, y'all. You say, wow, Pastor.